What's up everybody? Welcome to the Life Church Global Online Service Experience thing. I'm Danny. I'm Fallon. And yeah, we hope you guys have had an amazing week. So far. What's your week been like? My week has been great. Awesome. How's your week been? So sad. So sad. Okay. We hope you guys had an amazing week. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Um, if you're watching us for the very first time, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Does it this? come up here? Uh, wherever you are watching from, please put in one of those emoji things of your flags. Put it in the comment section represent so we know where you guys are. Your country, yeah. represent your location, yeah. wherever Fiji, you're from. Samoa, if you guys watch it from Samoa, put a little fire emoji there because you know we're like the best country in the world. Sure. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, we've got an exciting service lined up for you. All right. So right now we're gonna head into a time of worship. So wherever you are, worship Put God. your hands in the air just like you don't care and worship Jesus. Ooh, ooh. Worship Jesus. Ooh, ooh.
Kindness and mercy remind me how you love. 
Mind blasting. That was so cool. That was phenomenal, oh. guys. <laughs> yeah. I love you guys. Worship team, you're awesome. Really? really great. You guys are awesome. You yeah. know what's next, what Daddy? <gasps> story time. Yes. Story time. Story time. It's actually. It is story time. It is story time. We're going to get to hear from some people in our community testifying about the goodness of God. We're so excited. Wow. So I'm if so you've got so a testimony so to share, Please don't forget to send us your testimony at testimony at lifechurchglobal.com. It should come up on your screen now. Here. All right. Yeah. So let's go for it. Go. Hit us a thumbs up if you're ready. And over to lead pastors, John and Kelsey. Yes. Thank you, Danny and Fallon. That was awesome. Hey Church, welcome yeah. to Life Church Global Online. We're so glad that you joined us for today's service. Yeah. And we're super stoked that you invited a friend for today's service. Yes. So if you haven't, Send the link right now and, and invite them for the service. It's going to be awesome today. Yep. Awesome. They will be blessed for sure. Come on, man. And so um, while we're going to get started with our testimonies this week, yeah. um, we want to share the first one that we received. And this one was from Alejandra. Come on. Um, Alejandra, Viva la Mexico. Come Alejandra on. is a teacher. <laughs> and uh, she wrote to us saying that at the end of the academic year, in July, she was told that she will be transferred to teach at a boys' high school. Yeah. And um, she's praising God because she has had an amazing start to the school year. Come on. Um, she has a great coordinator, yeah. a professional principal, and she wow. said well-behaved students as well, which she wasn't expecting. That's something um, but that's they, yeah, she has some well-behaved <laughs> students, and so she's thanking God for that. And also last year, she said that her workload was pretty heavy. Yeah. This year, it has diminished 
quite come a lot. On, and come so on, we're thanking come on. God for that. Yeah, yeah. come on. I, I really feel like, you know, while, uh, while Kelsey was talking about Alejandra, I really feel like, uh, you know, we need to release the grace of God upon Amen. the teachers in yes, this season. Yes. You know, especially while, while the so teachers good. are coming back to school now and, and all the kids are coming back to school and, and some of the teachers are not in town. Uh, I really feel like teachers in general, wherever you are, you're going to begin to experience Amen. an increased measure Amen. of the grace of God over your life. Amen. I really feel that. And, and endeavor, uh, if you're a teacher, never say no to the work that's coming to you. Wow. Because I really believe that God is positioning you so for good. increase. Amen. Increase not only in, in terms of your ability to, to manage students, but also your ability to, to become a manager, to, to be a good self-manager. Uh, and, I sell, and I believe that God is going to really promote you and increase you because of His grace in your life. So good. So Amen. Good. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, this next testimony was sent in by Amanda. Yes. Um, Come on. Amanda works at a school as well. And yes. she said that last week she had a really bad cold. In fact, she said she had three sleepless nights yeah. uh, because of a sore throat, um, congestion, and also wow. a throbbing head. And she said that. Which are normal flu symptoms. Uh, normal flu symptoms. <laughs> and she said yeah. that um, during the Friday service, she actually got completely healed. Yeah. Come on. After Come the on, word. man. And so, that is so good. Um, in fact, the next day she woke up completely healed, healed yeah, without any um, flu-like symptoms, like yeah, you said, flu-like symptoms. And she goes on to say that um, the next day they had to be tested for COVID yeah. because of the, all the staff in the yes. school had to be tested and her test came back negative. Come on, with all powerful, powerful. the other staff members yeah. in her school Amen. as well. Amen. So, but, you, but you see how the enemy comes, you yeah. know, to, to put thoughts in your mind. Yes. Your body, see, I'll tell you, uh, your body reacts to the thoughts that are in your mind. Amen. If, yeah, if you true. have ever believed negative thoughts about yeah. what is happening in society was what what is happening in the world today yeah. if what is happening uh, around you whether oh you know a person coughed or a person sneezed around you that you're going to uh, you know catch something or the yeah. other if you've ever believed that it is during seasons like this during season like testings like this that your body will begin to manifest exactly what you're thinking what is in your mind. you're not actually sick yeah. But your body's beginning to react like that. Yeah. Uh, and so this is what happened with, with, with uh, Amanda. Amanda. Uh, it's not that, that she had any sickness. It's just that her body began to react. Yeah. And as the word, as she was in the service, as the worship, she was in the presence of yeah. God uh, and she was listening to the word of God and engaging with the word. Man, I tell you, uh, her mind got renewed and her body instantly so began yeah. to react to the word of God. Amen. So we are called to be reactors, okay? <laughs> We're reactors to the word or Amen. we react to the world. It depends what you want. You choose what you want to react to. We choose to, in our culture, we choose to react to the word of God. Yes. And that gives us Amen. life. So, so awesome good. testimony, Amanda. Yes, really very good. good. Yeah. All right, this next testimony was sent in by Joy T. Um, she said that she's been wanting to go to an optician because she's had, um, she had blurry vision. Yeah. Uh, but John released the word about clear vision Come and on. prophetic vision. Do Come you guys on. remember that? Yes, I and, remember that. Um, and yeah. she received it, she believed it. Yeah. And uh, she said now she's able to read and watch really clearly. So come on, come on. Clearly to her vision. Amen. So well done, Joy T. Yeah, amen. I, I love the way you say Joy T because, you know, her, her name is actually Jyoti, which is spelled J-Y-O, but you pronounce it as J-O-Y. -O -Y. And I really believe that's very prophetic amen. because God is bringing joy back into your life. Amen. Everything that you've experienced over the last few years, uh, Jyoti, wow. God is releasing joy amen. into your life. We, we as a church are renaming you into Joy <laughs> Joy That's your new name. That's your name now. Joy T. No longer will you have any more issues in your life because the Lord is with you. He is for you. And He goes before you and goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. This is your portion. So we just want to so bless good. you. So Come good. on. That is so really good. good. All right. Well, this next one was sent in by Alicia. Yes. Um, she said that all her original certificates from 10th grade right up to her semester degrees 
and all extracurriculars have been missing for the past five years. Wow. And uh, <laughs> she's been searching her house time and again, and she just couldn't find them. Come on. And she remembered that in her previous job, um, yeah. she had to submit all the original documents, wow. all the original certificates. Yeah. Um, and so she searched that office twice, and she couldn't find them. And uh, so while she's getting jobs in Bangalore, yeah. Alicia lives in Bangalore, she, while she's getting jobs in Bangalore, yeah. um, not having her original certificates, has kind of yeah. um, stopped her from seriously pursuing a job here in Dubai. Yeah. Wow. Um, but she that doesn't mean that she hasn't stopped dreaming. Yeah, okay? come on. And so come on now. Um, a few weeks ago, John released, you released the word yeah. about um, uh, restoration of things that have been lost. Come on, man. And yeah. uh, she was watching that service in Goa. She was yeah. in Goa during that time. She heard that word, she received it, she believed it, and she actually um, said that the certificates will be at home in yeah. Bangalore when Come she on. goes back. Come on. Come and on. so um, she's now back in Bangalore, and she said on Thursday she went into one of her drawers um, and she looked into the drawer, and sure enough, at Come the on. bottom of the drawer, all her Come original on. certificates so good. are there. That is powerful. And That's powerful. yeah, the ones that have been missing for the past yeah. five years. And this is a draw that she, she goes to almost every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Every That's day. so good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. This reminds me of this reminds me of the last time I actually shared this prophetic word about things that are missing that you're gonna find it yes. because angels are gonna find these things and bring them and keep them yes. in places where you obvious are familiar places. obvious places. Yes. Uh, and and we finished uh, recording the service and we went to cook something in the kitchen and Kelsey had this uh, you know this Chinese chopping knife that was missing for maybe about two or three months and we I looked all over for it. And after we finished the service, we went to the kitchen and it was right there top. on top. And it was, it's awesome because, you know, God is listening to the things that you care about. Yeah. He's listening to you. He's listening to the things that matter to you. I mean, whether it's certificates, whether uh, it is small things like knives or, yeah. or you know, <laughs> simple things. God, all God wants to demonstrate to you is that He loves you and He's into the details. Detail. He's yeah. into your life and He cares about the little yeah. things. So that is yeah, really awesome. Yeah, it's awesome because yeah. that's what Alicia was saying. She yeah. said that she sent the angels Come on, man. Come on. Uh, to place Ooh. the certificates in it's an powerful. obvious place. Yeah. And yeah, in a drawer that she looks into every day yeah. and it was there at the bottom Come of the on, drawer. All her so certificates, good. all yeah. her originals. Yeah. And now, so now, that she has her originals. We just pray and declare yeah. that she will be now pursuing Amen. a job Amen. in Dubai. And we just Amen. declare doors Amen. open for Amen. you, Alicia, yeah. come that on. Uh, you will come to Dubai. The desires of your heart will be met. Yeah, in come Jesus on. Name. Come on, what a powerful Amen. word. Amen. So All good. right, well, yeah. this next one was sent in by our nine-year-old niece, yes. um, Kalani, who is watching us from Australia. Kalani, who goes Hi, by Lala. Lala. <laughs> Um, now she wrote and she said, yeah. I lost my Apple Pen charger oh. and as I was looking for it, I said a few times, I declare that the electronic angels Come on. will help me Come find on, man. it. Come on, man. Nine years old. Nine years, Nine years, old. years old. Wow. And she so said good. that when she looked back next to her Apple Pen, the yeah. charger was right next Come to Come on. It. <laughs> so Come she on. was really excited. She, yeah. she told her, mom, you have to share with auntie my testimony. Wow, so, that is so well good. Well done, Lana. Hey, I just feel like there's something prophetic <laughs> happening right now. So I, I, I don't believe that we need to command angels, but we need to commission angels. Yes. We need to partner with yes. heaven. So why? So if there's anything in your life that is that you're in need of, yes. whether it's finances, whether it's you know, it's a job, it's, a job, it's documents, yes. uh, any anything that you need uh, the favor of heaven over your life, you need the the supernatural aspect of heaven to uh, begin to move on the earth. Yeah. Right now, I want you to begin to pray. I want you to declare right yes. now. If there's a house that you need and yes. you're looking for a house yes. and you need those certificates, you need those documents to come right in time, begin to commission angels now in the name of Jesus. Yes. And right now, let yes. me let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. every single person that needs things in their life, Lord, whether it's finances, whether it is 
uh, uh, whether there's documents, whether it is favor in courts. Uh, Lord, I release angels right now. Amen. Even even Amen. things to do, simple things like homework for kids. Lord, yes. right now, where the burden of homework is on the parents yes. and the children. Yes. Lord, while the kids are sleeping, I commission angels to finish their homework for them. Wow. I commission angels to finish the work uh, that people have, pending work Amen. in the offices, God. Right now, I just release the angels so to begin good. to finish work. So Lord, uh, right now, I'm seeing a person who is looking, I'm seeing people who are looking for jobs, not a person, I'm seeing people who are looking for jobs, who are listening to, to me speak right now and are commissioning angels to go and, and open doors for them to get new jobs. And I'm seeing angels going into offices and speaking to people in authority to begin to open, to feel comfortable, to begin to open the doors for them to start hiring. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the sign. There's a sign over you. Each and every person that needs a job in Life Church Global, there's a sign over you. Hiring now. Hiring has begun. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release new jobs into every single person that is watching this service right now. In Jesus' name. So good. Well, Amen. just to, to add to what you're saying, the, yes. the word that John just released, you know, about angels being yeah. commissioned, and I'm seeing businesses, yes. business Come on. Um, Come owners on. in this church. And if you're Ooh. watching us and, and you're a business owner, I'm seeing that there have been deals that have been put on hold been put on hold and as John was talking about angels being commissioned I'm seeing these angels going out from your your offices yeah. from your workplaces come on, come on. and going to the clients Amen. that have been holding on Amen. and taking time Amen. to confirm their orders yes, and so on. they are come speaking on. to those clients now Amen. to come back Amen. and this week you will yeah. receive confirmations Amen. We, we just Amen. declare that word right yeah. now over Amen. Here. and even payments angels, you know angels, payments yes. clients that have not paid you for yes. For months, right now, I just released that I can see businesses who have not been receiving payments for months and even years. Yes. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the fear of the Lord over, wow. over people who owe you money. Yes. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I thank the Lord that these people, their hearts are beginning to move yes. towards you. Yes. I release the mercy of God over you. I release the favor of God yes. over you. That that these people, angels would begin to, to begin to hear thoughts about you because uh, the these business people will begin to hear thoughts about you because angels are putting your name in their yes, mind and putting yes. words of your name in their mind. And I'm seeing angels right now being commissioned to these places and these people Amen. opening their doors to you and beginning to release funds into your bank so account. Good, so people good. who have not been given their end of, uh, you know, end of service salaries or their uh, end of service benefits, all of it is coming right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's coming right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. I'm seeing new funds being released into Life Church Amen. Global. I release it now so in good. Jesus' name. Woo! Come on. Wow, wow. Celebrate, I'm guys. Real. I know Come you're on, celebrating man. in your home right now. That was yeah. an amazing word. Yes. That Come was on. so powerful. Come on. All right. This Jesus. next testimony was sent in by Jonathan. Yep. Um, he sent us an email saying that he got his grades for university for this trimester and he was blessed with high distinction Come for on. all four units. Amen. Well Come done, on. Well done, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah, well done. So, so good. good. So good. All right. Um, this next one was sent in by Caleb. Um, Caleb, now you guys remember last week we shared a testimony from Caleb about him finding a new job. Yes, he got ADIB, a new job. Yeah, yes. That's right, yeah. And uh, this week he's testifying that they got a new apartment as yeah. per their heart's desire and specifications, and they were given a 5,000 dirham, dirham reduction Come on. for the rent yeah. without them even requesting for it. Amen. So Come on. good. So, so good. good. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, this next one was sent in by Solomon. And yeah. um, Solomon said that every week he sends the YouTube link of our service to his friend yeah. who is of another faith in yes. Qatar. Come on. And well done. Uh, well done. his friend has been listening to the service and he said that he has commented that the quality of the production yeah. is Excellent. Come on, life so, <laughs> experience team. Wow, well done, Woo-hoo. life experience team. Come on, so we celebrate amazing. that. Yeah. So good, yes. Now, one of the hardest working people. Amen. That we, that yes, we work that with. is yeah, so true. So good. We bless them. Yes. So if you're, if I know Kelsey was just about to say something, but if you're in the chat, why don't you just bless your life experience team? Come on, yes. just give them some love yes. and just say, give them a high five, whatever it is. Fist just pump. Yeah, fit, <laughs> a COVID pump, whatever you want to give them. <laughs> just, just show them some love right now. Yes. Come so on. Amazing. 
are awesome. We're yes. so blessed with them. Yeah. Yes. Now, this friend goes on to say that he lost his job uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, but Solomon reminded him yeah. of his other job that God miraculously provided for wow, him. Come on. And Solomon told him that God is going to open another door. Come on. Two come on. days later, yes, come on. Solomon's friend gets a call for an interview from a company that he didn't even apply. Yeah, that, that is to. life, man. <laughs> that is so life. That is a life. Um, and Come so on. when he went for the interview, he asked for a higher salary. That's good. That and is so life, man. That is so life. <laughs> and the management management said to him, hey, yeah. listen, you know, we've had to um, make a few of our employees redundant because of the situation. Yeah. And here you are asking us for a higher <laughs> salary. And anyway, at the end of that, the company agreed to Come on. everything that he asked for. That is so good. And that is the so salary, good. the package was a lot better than than his previous job. Yeah, wow, come on. So amazing, on. Huh? That is so life. There are certain, there are certain <laughs> values you that are- You missed the word for that. Really? That people will be given what they ask oh, for when yes. they yeah, for yeah, interviews. Yeah. That is so true, so yeah. Good. That's so true. But it is so life, you know, the, the value system that we have, that we, we don't look down on ourselves. We don't, we don't uh, because we believe God's word, our identity is so secure in Christ yeah. that people outside will begin to honor Christ in us. And that's what's happening. When you begin so to receive good. the word in you, the, your, the businesses and the companies around you that you're going to work for or you're going to work with will begin to honor you because Amen. we're so about good. quality, not about Amen. quantity. So that is a life value. So, so well good. done, Solomon's awesome, friend awesome. all the way in Qatar. Bless yes. you. Yes, now yeah. Solomon also goes on to say that he spoke to one of his colleagues in the office yeah. and also forwarded the link the yeah, YouTube link, power um, on the link of our life experience. Yeah. And after watching it for one week, now every Thursday, this friend is yeah. asking Solomon for come the on, link so that he can watch the service. So yeah, well we're, done. Yeah, well we're done. hearing a lot of people asking for the links. So when you're sending the link to them, also ask them to click, subscribe, yeah, yes. click like and subscribe. Yes. It's really <laughs> awesome if you do that because <laughs> then we don't have to depend on other people to send us the link. Yes. So if you're there, if you're watching us for the first time, just go ahead and click like and subscribe. Yes. And then automatically you'll get all our updates because there's some new content coming up in the future and it's going to be super awesome. I'm really, so all, I'm really excited about that. Yes. But send the link. <laughs> <laughs> now the last testimony that we want to share today yeah. was sent in um, from Marina. Marina yep. is Blanche's sister. Oh wow, um, Come And on. Marina said that she was experiencing shooting pain in her right arm. Sometimes yeah. the pain would be so unbearable, but due to the pandemic, she couldn't approach a doctor. Yeah. Um, so she asked uh, her sister Blanche and her team to yeah. pray for her. Blanche and her team. Yes. yes. Come on. <laughs> and she goes on to say that now I am good even without the help of a doctor. Come on. Come and on. she said, so ever since Lighted Global went live on YouTube, yeah. I have not missed out on tuning in wow. for every service. Wow. And I would like to thank you, pastors. Yeah your pastors and church members yes. for keeping me in prayer. Oh, come so on. So that's amazing. So, so, so good. good. Yeah. So we good. bless you, Marina. Yes. Bless yes. you with long life and good health. Perfect that's your health. portion. Perfect yeah, that's your portion. Your portion. So well, that's good. our last testimony for today. I just feel like God is, is um, bringing a, a reassurance uh, to the body. I just feel like um, uh, that um, because of the pandemic, we see a lot of uh, spikes and we see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people's, uh, people are, have an expectation that this thing is going to end soon. This thing is going to end soon and, and things are going to go back to normal. I want you to, I want to assure you, things are not going to go back to normal because the definition of normal has changed. And we have to come into a place where we, we, we understand that God is doing a new thing with the yeah. body. God is doing a brand new thing with His church. Okay. It, 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 he's trying to take away the crutches of physical dependence on people wow. so that we could depend on Him directly so and good. have a one-on-one -on -one wow. connection with God. And wow. I feel like in this season, he, he, the, the, the little spikes of you know cases increasing, cases going down, but we must understand that no matter what happens around us, you're healthy. 
You're Amen. perfect. The word Amen. over you is that nothing will touch Amen. your body. No Amen. sickness, no disease, no no virus. Nothing will touch your body. Life yeah. Church Global, you have a word. And we live, our life is based on, on the word. We apply yes. the word of God in yes. our life. Yes. And I really feel like even people who have, uh, who, who, who were excited for, for, you know, what's going to come. I'm, I can't wait for church to begin. Just, <laughs> it, it's, it's absolutely okay for us not to have church for a little more longer because we are still having church yes. right now yes. we're having church with with with, um, with with each one of us in the spirit and that is awesome because that is exactly what church is meant to be never blocked in by the four walls and in this season you know i want to encourage you to genuinely pursue God yeah. genuinely pursue God even with the church the church service that we have online you might be a part of Life yeah. Church Global and you might be like oh well you know I'll watch it on Sunday or I'll watch it on Monday I'll watch it Tuesday just before I have to go for life group you know <laughs> I want to I encourage you there is something different yeah. about the Friday service. Yeah. There's something different when God has assigned us a time and a place that where you can yeah. gather together. You know, he says where two or three are gathered together in my name. Yeah. He didn't say in my building. He did not say in, in when we gather together in 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 this in the in the physical. He says when two or three gather together in my name. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in yeah. truth. So we must understand that when we gather on a Friday in the name of Jesus, he's present. Amen. He's present where Amen. you are right now. He's present where we are. He's present when you're in the car. He's present everywhere. The reason being, he's taken a church experience and he's made it viral. He's, he's taken a church experience that's limited only so to good. one place at one point in time and he's made it available for you so at any time. You can have that two or three gathered together in my name anytime. Like but there's something special Amen. about Friday. Amen. And I wanna I want us to I wanna invite you and I wanna encourage you into this place of saying, hey, you know what? That's my commitment. Yeah. That's I'm faithful whether people watch me or people don't watch me. Yeah. Because God, his eyes are upon me. Amen. And I wanna encourage you. I know that you're watching the service right now. Yes, but if yes. you're watching the service for the first time on a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, not on Friday, but Thursday, but I wanna encourage you to remain faithful to the body that yeah. God has called you to. Yes. You know, there's a verse that says, be planted in the house yes. of the Lord. And what that means is that no matter what happens in life, no matter whether there's a storm coming your way, if you're planted in the house of the Lord, no matter what happens, a tree does not decide, oh, okay, okay, well, you know, there's a storm happening in my life. I'm going to get up and go to another church. <laughs> or I'm going to get up and go to another country. Or I'm going to get up and go to live in a place where it's all safe. And no, no. When <laughs> When the wind blows, a tree knows to go deep into its roots. It, it goes deep into the ground where it is planted. Yes. And I really believe that each so one of us during this storm, during this pandemic, are given an opportunity to go deeper into the community that yeah. God has called you to be in. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you. Amazing. I want to so encourage good. you to go deep into relationships, go yeah. deep into your community, go deep uh, with your life coach, with your with the people in your life groups, with, with your worship teams or whichever yeah. teams you're part of. Go deep in relationship because I'll tell you, your life will never be the same Amen. again. So Amen. I want to encourage you with that word. Amen. So, so go so for good. it, love. Yeah, yeah I um, as uh, we were just preparing for the service uh, today, um, the Lord just gave me a few words. Um, and the first one that I want to release is actually the Lord showed me that there is a lady, um, actually two ladies, but I'll speak about the first one first. Um, there's a lady who um, is watching the service right now who yep. has had multiple C-sections. Wow, okay? come on. Come and on. your heart's desire has always been to have more kids. Yes. But um, there's a fear inside of you now yeah. Um, because you, you've heard, not the doctors have not said anything to you, but you've heard from people that it's not safe yeah. to have any more C-sections. And now that fear is inside of you and it's stopping you from having what you have desired for. Yeah. And so today I want to set you free Come from on. that fear that Come is on. in your heart. 
In fact, um, I'm seeing you having, you will have more kids. Amen. I Amen. declare that right now over you and that I set you free from that fear of having any more C-sections. In fact, I declare that the next delivery yes. will be a normal delivery. Amen. And Amen. so I release Amen. that word over you. Yeah. You're watching yeah. us right now um, and that word is for you. You've yeah. been desiring to have more kids, yeah. but because of the multiple C-sections, there's people have spoken. Yeah. The doctors have not said anything, but people that you've sat with, yeah. the words that you've heard has gone into your heart and has um, uh, put fear in your heart. Yeah. And on. so we set you free. You're Amen. free from that today. Amen. And we release you to have more kids. Yes. And that yes. the next delivery be will fruitful. be Amen. a normal delivery. Yes, be fruitful yes. and multiply. Yes. That's the word. Yeah. And um, the second lady that I'm seeing also is something similar. Um, but this lady, this other lady uh, is, um, you had a traumatic experience during your first childbirth. Yeah. And the same thing. You have now experienced fear because of that experience. Yeah. Fear is now in your heart and you're longing. Yeah. You're wanting another child. But that experience is still so fresh in your memory. Yeah. And today I set, set you free. Come on. I Amen. uproot all those negative yes. things that yes. is in your mind. Come on. Come you on. are free. I, I speak healing yeah. into your heart Beautiful. and we remove every bad experience yeah. that you have had from that first childbirth yeah. and we just release you. Come we on. declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength yeah. and that from today you will start desiring to yeah. have children again. Yeah. And so Come you on. will go, you will experience a beautiful pregnancy yeah. and you'll experience the next delivery will be so phenomenal, supernatural. Yeah. We declare that it will be supernatural and we Come just speak on. that over you. Over Come you on, in Jesus that is name. so good. You know, you, you're awesome. Love. Yeah. I love the way you flow in the prophetic. I love the way God speaks to you. And there's such a there's such a um, motherly side of, of God that really comes across through the prophetic words. And, and I love I love um, who you are to me. And, and I absolutely <laughs> love you. It, it, it's, it's so good. But yeah. The reason why I'm saying that yeah. is because there are people who are watching who are very apprehensive of um, of relationships, especially in, in marriage, where they don't allow their wives uh, to be themselves around them. Uh, and they feel like if they have strong, a strong, powerful woman in their life, that they feel that they're powerless. And I want to let you know that you both the husband and the wife are one flesh. Mm -hmm. If your wife is not powerful, then you are weak. Yeah, you have to allow your wife to step into the fullness of God's call over her life. Uh, and I really believe that that if you uh, uh, if you are uh, pushing your wife down to feel powerful, that is not the nature of Christ. Yeah. Christ loves his bride to a point where he laid down his life so that his bride can live. And it's truly, for me, it's an honor to see my wife step into Christ's call over her life and allow Christ to communicate from uh, through her you know it, it's it's such a life giving she's such a life giving source and i'm i'm super blessed and you will be super blessed when you allow your wife to step into the fullness of god's call over her life so i just feel like you know yeah i, I just feel like we need to release blessings of a marriage today and so right now in the name of jesus uh, people who are married who want to get married yes uh, Lord, I just release a, a grace upon them for both yes. husband and wife to be powerful. Yes. God, to be powerful, not to be intimidated by one another, not to be put down by one another, but to be empowered and encouraged yes. and, and be strengthened by each other's strength, God. I yes. thank you that each each gifts, the gifts that you've put in each in the husband and the wife, Lord, yeah. are, are meant to are, are meant to complement one another. And yes. so I really feel, Lord, in this season that that you're bringing marriage together and you're making marriages in Life Church Global stronger than ever before and healthy God. Thank you God. Thank you that, that you're releasing great communication in marriage, in relationships Lord. You're bringing, you're bringing um, uh, I see God bringing a, a fresh uh, revelation to how you communicate uh, in relationships and I really believe that God is restoring honor and dignity and love back into, into marriages and relationships. We can say that healthy marriages yeah will create healthy families. And so, so we just release that. Yeah. When, the, when the couple is healthy, you will see it 
um, in your kids. You'll yeah. see it in Come your on. family. Come You'll on. feel it in your home. Yeah. And so we just bless bless the families in yeah. our church. Come on. Um, the families that are watching us. Yeah. We bless you. So good. And uh, we just release life into every area. Amen. Every Amen. area of your home. Amen. And so, yeah. Um, I had a couple more. I had yeah, two go words. For, go for, yeah, go healings. For, yeah. Um, one for migraines. Yeah. Um, I got the word migraines, and there's excruciating pain. In yeah. fact, Come on. the pain is so bad that it will yeah. keep you up at night, yeah. and all you want to do is just lie down and close your eyes and lock yourself in a dark room. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm I'm seeing, and I'm just releasing healing right now. Wow. Come so on. If you are struggling, if you have been experiencing migraines, yeah. severe, severe pain, yeah. we set you free today. Amen. We set you free from yep. that pain and you are healed. Amen. Amen. You, you are healed. So good. No more pain. No, no more, more pain. migraines yep. in yep. Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. Um, the going. last one yep. that I have is actually yep. for high blood pressure. Wow. People who are struggling and suffering from high blood pressure. Come on. We just release the power of God into Amen. your body. Amen. It will flow into, as you're listening and as you're watching us right now, yeah. that the power of God will flow through Thank every you, Jesus. vein in your Amen. body. Amen. It will affect every organ. The power yeah. of God will hit your organ Come so on. much yeah. that it will actually be like Ooh. a reset or a restart into your organs right now. Yeah. Every cell in your body will start vibrating with the power of God. Amen. As you're listening to us right now, Amen. you're feeling the heat, you're feeling feeling the power, so you're feeling good. the presence yeah. right now. Yeah. No more um, high blood pressure. Amen. In fact, the next appointment that you'll go to, you will get off your medication. Yes. The doctor will say you are completely healed Heal. Amen. in Amen. Jesus' Amen. name. So we Amen. declare that over you. Yeah. We Come declare on. that over you. And so that's it, guys, for yeah. testimonies today. Yeah. You know, why don't you just celebrate and thank God for all that He has Come done. On. Amazing testimonies. So and good. The, the words so that good. we have released, we're believing that more testimonies will come yes. this coming week. And yeah. so we bless you bless with you. an amazing week, a powerful week, a week full of life yeah. and full of hope, Amen. full of joy. Yeah. So we bless you and get ready now. We're going to get into the word. Amen. We're excited for it. You Amen. know, we know it's going to be life giving. It's yeah. going to be life transforming. So Come on. get ready, get your hearts ready. Prepare that ground for the awesome seeds that you're about to receive today. <laughs> yeah. So we love you guys yeah. and we bless you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Arigato. Hey church, welcome back. Uh, that time of testimonies and ministry time was absolutely powerful. I feel so honored and so privileged uh, to be able to communicate, to be the vessel that communicates God's word to you today. Uh, and I, I, I want to encourage you to, uh, to keep your hearts open for today's word. And um, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be life changing. Um, we're in the series of of Kingdom Dynamics and in Kingdom Dynamics we're on a mini series called Kingdom Culture and today I really believe that God wants us to go deeper in understanding how and why it's important for us to position our hearts for increase. Now when I say the word increase and positioning our heart for increase a lot of times people think about it uh, think about financial increase or you know promotions and things like that but wait I've got a good word for you today and and really God is going to reveal to us through his scriptures really what God wants to increase in our lives and I, and I feel like you know this is a season where God is really exposing our hearts to really what is in it and the title of my message today is positioning your heart for increase so I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. We've read this portion. I've taught this pa from this passage, passage so many times during this season. But I really believe the more we read and reread scripture, that God would unveil the mysteries of the kingdom to us. And I really believe that this is a mystery today that God is revealing to us. As we apply, as we create a value system for what I'm about to teach you today, and we apply it in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing else but Christ will be revealed out of your life. And so today, I'm glad that we're in this portion of scripture because God is revealing hearts. And I'm telling you today, as God begins to reveal your heart to you, don't look at somebody. 
don't in your mind don't think that this is a good verse for this person and this person needs to follow the word and that person needs to do this today you need to sit down and say man this word is for me i'm going to apply this word i need this word i need to be christ like okay so everyone in the in the chats i want you to to just begin to chat out and say and just say hey i'm going to be christ like i'm going to be christ like this word is for me all right so as as you uh, as you're saying an amen just remember when you're saying an amen our culture in our church is that i'm agreeing to being christ like all right right so let's read um, chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 and we'll read from verse 3 then he spoke that's jesus spoke many things to them in parables saying behold a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured it some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth but when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them but others fell on good ground i want you to say good ground come on good ground others fell on good ground and yielded a crop some a hundredfold some 60 some 30 he who has ears to hear let him here this is an absolutely powerful passage that jesus was talk is talking about and in this passage jesus reveals to us he's not blatantly telling us guys this is the culture of heaven this is the value system of heaven but if you have ears to hear you will hear what jesus values you will you will hear what the kingdom of god values okay so just understand in all of jesus's teachings he had one message and that message was the kingdom of god is here he came to present and usher the kingdom of god so in everything every teaching that jesus did you have to have a primary lens of the kingdom of god okay so he's teaching you about the kingdom and he's saying this the 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 a sower went to sow seed we know that god god is the farmer who who went to sow seed and the seed is christ is the is the living word and he begins to talk about the four different types of soil and these types of soil are, are all uh, four types of ground are are, are the uh, are the states of people's hearts and he he begins to talk about how um people have can have one type of ground in their heart or they can have all four types in in the same person all right so you can have whether whether you have the wayside if if you feel like people have walked all over you all your life and and you know you you are hard as the uh, as a road and and nothing seems to be going in uh, you know it, it 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 might you might identify yourself in in that portion but you also might be a person that has issues in your heart you might be like stony ground like you have issues in your heart like unforgiveness and you might have habits and things like that and you might receive the word immediately and you'll be excited on a friday but come saturday sunday uh, you know when the when when the sun comes up and the pressure of the world comes up and you have to go to the office and look at that same old boss again uh, seems like you know it just withers away uh, or you might find yourself as a uh, as a as a as a good ground and the good ground ladies and gentlemen has a responsibility and that responsibility is to hear is to receive hear and understand the word okay the the good ground is not just sitting there doing absolutely nothing the good ground also partners with the sower the the the, the sower comes and he lib- he gives liberally he gives generously what does he give he gives you christ but he gives you christ in seed form the thing about a person who has good ground is a person firstly who has a heart to receive he has a heart to receive he listens to the word and he understands the word Okay the three things that a that a person does he has he listens he he receives the word he listens to it and he understands it i'll get to this in a little bit later but the state of your heart determines the harvest that you produce in your life 
I'll say that again. The state of your heart determines the harvest that you produce. Positioning your heart for increase is a value of the kingdom. And the reason why it's a value for the kingdom is because the Christ seed that is sown in you bears a harvest. That harvest in your life is not financial. That harvest in your life is not material. That harvest in your life is Christ. The seed that God sows in you is Christ and the harvest that you produce in your life is Christ. When you, when you receive the word of God in your life, God is the one who gives you the seed. Now the, the way you position your heart, the way you, you create a value in your heart for Christ determines how much you deal with your heart. Not how much Christ is produced in your heart. The value of the kingdom is not about how much you have, but how you deal with your heart. Because God is looking at the heart. To the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus says, hey, you, are, you guys look like whitewashed tombs. You look nice on the outside, but inside you're full of skeleton bones. You're dead. You're skeleton bones on the inside. And so God is looking in the inside of your heart and he's giving you seed liberally. But the state of your heart determines what kind of a harvest you produce. And so the value system, for me to, to, to have a value system for increase in my life, to, to mature in my life, to grow in my life, I need to position my heart to clean it up in such a way that the fullness of the seed is produced out of my life. So the human being or, or a child of God, a new creation, is, a, is, the, is the perfect vessel to reproduce Christ on the earth. The, the, the new creation who believes the word is, is the perfect environment, is the perfect soil to reproduce Christ on the earth. And so it determines now, the state of your heart determines how much of a harvest of Christ you will produce. Why? It's because the world desires Christ. Actually, the Bible says uh, that, that Christ in me is the hope of glory. It doesn't say John in me is the hope of glory. He says Christ in me is the hope of glory. So when we, we, when we are born into the kingdom of God, uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who lived and died for me. It's no longer you who lives. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Ladies and gentlemen, self died on the cross. Amen. Me died on the cross. I died on the cross. It is no longer you and I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So what do people experience around you? What do, what do the world see around you? Because they're looking at you now and, they, and they, they look at you as a solution to have Christ. You're the, you're the one, you're the, you're, you call yourself the, the Christian. You're like the, you're the Christian. You, you call yourself the one who, is, who, who bears the image and the likeness of Christ on the earth. And the world is looking for Christ. But when they come close to you, what do they see? Do they see a field that is only thorns and thistles? That people, when they come to you, only get hurt when they come close to you? Do they see knives and spears in your heart that you, things that you, pain and, and bitterness and anger and issues that you've not dealt with in your life? Daddy issues, mommy issues, you know, rejection issues. People come close to you and they want to build relationship with you. And the more close that people come to you, it feels like, seems to be like there's more pain in your heart. It's because you've not dealt with the soil of your heart. You've not dealt with the ground in your heart. You've not removed, you've not allowed God to remove those thorns and thistles and those rocks that are in your heart. See, good ground is a ground where the seed goes deep. I believe that every single person in Life Church Global, listen to me very carefully, every single person in Life Church Global has the potential of being a hundredfold harvest, of bearing a hundredfold harvest. But you're, the harvest of Christ in your life is determined by how much of your heart you allow God to deal with. You must understand, when the world 
begins to experience Christ around you, they will favor you and they will bless you as the vessel that brings the harvest. You're just, you and I are just vessels of Christ on the earth. Uh, when you walk through the fields, uh, you don't look at, wow, what a good ground that is. Wow, look at the soil. Wow, man, that ground is awesome. No, they look at the harvest. They look at what is on those trees. They look at uh, what is, they look at the type of crop and they'll go, wow, that is awesome. That is Christ. I want to partake of what is happening in that forest. I want to partake of what is happening in those fruit trees. I don't want, I don't want to look at a field which is half baked and half burnt and half, you know, the, the stones and rocks and all of that and trees coming out from under the rocks. You know what I mean? We, we, when they look at a, at a, at a field, they, they give glory to the farmer because he has dealt with the stones and the thistles and all of that stuff that is in the ground so that the harvest comes out full. We, God is looking to reproduce Christ in you and me. That is what we need to focus on increasing. I don't want to become so spiritually minded that I'm not earthly good. I want to, we need to understand that every word that God gives us will go deeper and manifest Christ when we receive it and when we apply it in our life. When you apply the word in your life, you begin to manifest Christ in you. You must understand, when the seed goes deep into your heart, Christ in the seed begins to bear harvest. The crop begins to grow and now people around you can see Christ in you. They can't see you, but they can see Christ in you. But it is something else when Christ begins to bear fruit in your life. It's one thing to have Christ growing in you, but it's a totally different thing when Christ begins to reproduce fruit in your life. That fruit, ladies and gentlemen, is glory. Christ in me is the hope of glory. You know, when we receive the word of God, we receive it with hope. We don't receive it because we want another, another word. I receive it with hope, brother. I want to understand this word because I want to receive it with hope that Christ will begin to manifest his glory through my life. Where people will not look at me, they won't see John, they won't see Kelsey, but they will see Christ. They will see the glory that begins to shine out of my life. They begin to see the glory of Christ that begins to shine out of my you and my life. And I truly believe that, that, that if we can create a high value for what heaven values. See heaven, even God himself values his word above his name. Yeah. So I want to give you three values right now. That as a church, we need to apply these values in our life. So the first thing, uh, uh, the first thing that we need to value, place a high value on, is Christ in me. Not John in me, not Danny in me, not Fallon in me, not Kelsey in me, but Christ in me. The goal of my life, the goal of my existence on earth is just one thing, is for Christ to be manifested in my life. Truly, uh, you know, I I really believe that, that when Christ died on that cross, John died on that cross. It is no longer John who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And we have to create a value for it because I've seen Christians communicate Christ, but desire self. When Christ is formed in me, the glory of God is revealed. Why? It's because Christ is the manifest glory of the Father. When Christ is revealed in me, the nations begin to beckon Christ. They begin to approach Christ. They come to Christ. They come to Christ in you because of the glory that begins to shine through Christ. So today I want to encourage you. Do whatever it takes to make Christ in me a priority and a value in your life. Christ in me, nothing else, just Christ in me. I just want Christ to be formed in me. 
If we can have this value system, I'm telling you, when we gather together, we're going to celebrate Christ. We're going to experience Christ and we're going to experience such glory like we've never experienced before. We have to identify. We have to identify with the need, firstly, for Christ in us. There's a purpose in my life. If it, if it is only you living and only living for your will to be done, then you're saying, okay, John, let John live, but not Christ. And God won't get intimidated by it because he's, you're his son. He'll bless you, all of that. But your blessings will be short-lived. They'll only be a blessing to you, but they won't bring transformation into people around you. They will say, wow, you know, you're such a good guy, man. You're such a good guy. Wow, what a, what a, wow, such a phenomenal preacher. Wow, what a worship leader. Wow, what a communicator. Wow, what a businessman. But they won't say anything about Christ. That's where it's at. When the world comes to you and recognizes, hold on a minute, I don't know what it is, but there's something different about you. What is it? Oh, it's Christ in me. That's what you're experiencing. It's Christ. Christ, like Jesus, that Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago, yeah, 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 Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago is still alive. See, your, your life is a testimony of Christ. Yeah. You're a Christian. So having a high value for Christ in me, nothing else other than Christ in me. So which means you wake up in the morning and the first thought in your mind is I need Christ in me. I want to mature in my understanding of Christ in me. I want to grow in my understanding of Christ in me. God, I am going to get my heart ready. The soil in my heart. Process my heart every single night. Now I'll tell you, when I walk my dogs, I process my heart. I'm like, God, uh, I want to, I, I make myself naked before you. I make myself transparent before you. Lord, if there's anything in my heart that is not of you, I want you to reveal it to me. And God begins to talk to me about this, about that, about, hey, this thing, that thing. And then I ask him to deal with it. Lord, take it. I surrender it right now. Expose it in the light of your glory. And the power, the grip of self begins to die and, and Christ begins to come and give life in us. So the second thing is identify the areas of our hearts that are not Christ-like. We live in a world that is constantly distracting us from Christ by feeding us knowledge about self. We live in a world that is constantly distracting us from Christ and encouraging us and empowering us to focus on self, self-empowerment, feminism. One, one race is better than the other race. One group of people is better than the other group of people. Only if you have MBA would you be better than a graduate, you know, a, a bachelor's, a commerce graduate. Oh, wow, you know, we have these, these, these segregations because we think that one is better than the other, whether because of qualification, color of your skin, where you come from, how rich your mommy and daddy were, whatever it is, Christ makes all of us the same. Christ makes all of us the same. And we have to identify when the world is trying to distract us from Christ. And a lot of times people, uh, the, 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 the shepherding movement came in and they started giving people, uh, you know, a, a lot of rules and regulations. Don't watch TV and don't watch movies and don't listen to rock and roll music and the devil will come and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I used to get put off by it, but I, but I saw what the message was. I didn't, I didn't like the method, but I understood the message. They were trying to communicate to us that the world is trying to distract us from being Christ-like. It should have been so simple. Instead of bringing rules and regulations, they could have just directed people or demonstrated Christ. Yeah. It's the most simple thing ever. If you have Christ in you, walk into a room and display Christ. He is the desire of the nations. Everybody stops getting distracted by the world and gets attracted to you. It's simple. Right? It is simple. When you die to self, it becomes simple that Christ lives in you. And he is the hope of glory. So 
when uh, when you I, for you to identify areas of your heart that are not Christ like God has very um, strategically put you in a community put you in a family put you in a friendship circle put you in a company or a business where people around you will begin to reveal what is in your heart oh man i tell you the bible says iron sharpens iron oh brother i don't like this ironing <laughs> I feel like I'm getting ironed every time I come to church. I feel like when we're listening to to the word at Life Church Global, it feels like my heart is just taken and and shred to pieces. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. The old man is being shred to pieces and you're allowing Christ to be formed in you. But I'll tell you something. Do people around you testify of Christ in you? Or do they testify of you in you? <laughs> it's very important. Don't get distracted now. Stay focused. This is a very important part of the message. Do your colleagues at work come to you and testify of Christ in you? Or they testify of you in you? Are they experiencing Christ in you? Because if it's not Christ, there is another kingdom that is being formed in you. What is that kingdom? You have to identify that because for the sole reason that you have a high value for Christ in you. You know, I'll tell you something. When, uh, when Kelsey and I got married, you know, um, this was about 13 years ago, or more than 13 years ago. We, I never opened my heart to anybody to speak into my life. There were certain areas that I did that I wanted in, input in those areas, and but the but the you know the the painful parts of my heart, the 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 parts of my heart where I felt very confident in, uh, where I felt like wow I'm the man, uh, you know I felt like wow dude you know I, I'm I'm better than anybody else in the, the, those areas. Uh, when I got married to Kelsey, I had such a desire to be Christ-like. That the areas that I thought I was confident in, I allowed Kelsey to see those areas. And I allowed Kelsey to speak into my life. See, I, 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 you know, sometimes we think that people around us don't love us. When they speak the things that we don't want to hear. You only want people to celebrate the things that you're good at. Not the things that you suck at. Not the things that you're really bad at. Not the things that you hide that only God knows and you know. But you think you, you want to put this, wow, I'm, a, you know, I'm the man. I'm the woman. Whatever you want to call yourself. But when I, when I allowed Kelsey in, into, into my heart, Kelsey began to very lovingly but firmly <laughs> speak the truth. And every area that I was confident in was shattered to pieces. And I allowed it to happen. You know why? Because I was confident in my own ability. I was confident in my own strength. I was confident in not in the grace of God, not in, in the abilities of Christ, not in the gifts of Christ in me. I was more confident in my ability and what I was good at rather than allowing the weak things in my life, the strength, every area of my life to experience the grace of God. And Kelsey would, would, would very simply, you know, I, would, I, th I thought I was a very good driver till Kelsey sat in the car. <laughs> and uh, when she sat in the car, I was, I was trying to impress her as to how well I can handle the car. Uh, you know, this is back 13, 13 years ago, so you can't put any fines on me, okay? You can't put any issue on me right now. I, my life has changed. Um, I, I, I took a, a simple 1.6 liter Ford Focus manual and I pushed it to about 200 on a highway. And Kelsey was sitting in the car, uh, not impressed. 
And I was, this is, I was trying to impress her. I was like, yeah, look at, mm, I like the speed, huh? Look at how I'm controlling the car. Um, and she just uttered these few words. And she just said, you know, I don't feel safe with you. <laughs> Went down to 80. <laughs> she said, just stick to the speed limit. I think that's what God would want you to do. At first, I would fight. I was like, ah, no, no, this is not me. I'm trying to defend. I'm better than this. I'm, you know. But Kyasi was just firm and straight. She didn't budge. And I realized that my desire to be Christ-like was being formed by the culture that I was in. My marriage. It was an environment, it was a culture in our marriage. I allowed Kelsey and I, for us to have a stronger marriage, we had to leave our families and cleave together and create our own culture that was a kingdom culture. And that culture began to disciple the both of us. I had to learn to die in a lot of areas and Kelsey had to learn to die in a lot of areas. But both of us, when, the, when we died to those areas, the Spirit of God began to resurrect Christ in us to the point where now what we're doing is because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're not trying to promote ourselves. We're trying to, we're trying to display Christ in us. And that is the responsibility of every Christian. But you will not reach that place unless you have people around you who will speak the truth to you. Yeah. Who are not intimidated by your nonsense, but actually communicate the sense of Christ in you. See, you must understand the community, if, the, if everyone in the community is focused on being Christ-like, we must understand that when we come together, we're literally like mirrors mirroring each other. Where I'm, um, I'm, I've formed Christ in me during the weekend. When I come to church, I'm a mirror of who you need to be, of who you need to develop in Christ. I'm not walking around pointing people's flaws. Hey, you need to change this and you need to change that and you need to change your ways. Your angle is not right. You know, I can keep going. You can, you can look at the flaws at everybody. That red light needs to change. That light needs to change you. You need to sit properly. This is the presence of God. You can go on and on and on with all that nonsense and it does not benefit anybody. What benefits people around you? You focus on being Christ-like. You focus on being that mirror. Let your life be so Christ-like that when people around you look at you, you don't have to talk much. They just look at Christ in you and they know that's exactly who, you need, who they need to be. But you need to identify areas of your heart that need to be dealt with. You need to identify, man, this is, Jesus said, there are four types of soil. Where am I in this? What is in my heart? Do I, when, I, when I listen to the word, is it like just falling on stony ground? Am I thinking about like barbecue after, my, uh, after the message right now? Or am I thinking of Christ in me? I'm listening to this word to be able to receive Christ in me. The third value that we need to really focus on is dealing with the root. We need to be quick to identify areas of our heart, the, the types of soil in our heart, but we also need to identify the root of why we are behaving the way we are behaving. Jesus was very quick when he, went, uh, when he was passing by the tree, he looked at the tree and he expected fruit from the tree. But when he didn't find fruit on the tree, he cursed the root. A lot of times we look at the behavior pattern of people around us and we think by cutting, by behavior um, uh, modification, we, we, we can get some sort of result. And we think we cut all the fruit that is on that tree and we'll deal with the problem. They'll only change for a season, yeah. but the roots are not being dealt with. We might think, oh, well, a person has anger issues, a person, person has outbursts, and a person misunderstands all the time, or a person is, is suffering with depression all the time, only to understand that that, if you trace it, if a person opens their heart 
to God and they begin to ask God to reveal the root of the problem, the, the world seeds, the experience, uh, uh, the family experience seeds that, were, that, were, that are deep down inside, you'll begin to see that there are roots that you've not dealt with. There are roots that have kind of intermingled with the seeds of Christ in you and they're kind of growing together. And, and now people are looking at you. One day you're Christ-like, one day you are like the devil, like one day you are a human being, one day you're an alien. I mean, there's kind of weird stuff happening around this person. I'm not getting, I don't like to hang out with this person only because I can't, I'm not experiencing Christ. When you walk around and you're giving counsel because you know, you know the word of God, you know, you know, you've read the Bible and you have lots of stuff in your life. You've done a lot of things. And so now you walk around and you're giving counsel to people. You wonder why they don't take it. It's because they're not experiencing Christ. They're not experiencing Christ. When you deal with the root of the problem in your heart, now the fruit doesn't appear. Just, in, just think, in the same way, that God bears fruit, the fruit of the Spirit in your life, so does the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. The wisdom of this world. When you receive the wisdom of this world into your heart, trust me, you're the perfect vessel for, to, for it to bear fruit. And we wonder why 10 years down the line you are behaving like this. Why, why is this person depressed all the time? Well, because they felt rejected when they were a baby. That in the mother's womb, the mother wanted to push this baby and she's fed up of being pregnant. I, gosh, I just want to get rid of this child. And she pushed the baby out and that baby felt the rejection of the mother as the baby was coming out only to grow with rejection issues all her life. I'll tell you, depression, oppression is a choice. Rejection is a choice. You know how many times I've been rejected? A lot. But do I carry rejection issues in my life? No. Why? Because I reject rejection. You reject me, I reject your rejection. I don't reject you, I reject your rejection. Yes. I've come, Christ in me rejects your rejection. Come on now. But see, you must understand, if you want to experience this grace, if you want to experience the kingdom of heaven on earth, it starts by you creating, positioning your heart for an increase of Christ in it. Yes. Without Christ, you're going to struggle. And when people, when, you, when, when we see people around us, we have to stop trying to give them counsel to, to change their ways. Just be Christ, man. You, if, you, if you want, you can look at my life and you can do what I'm doing. You can go to Christ and you can see and have a desire for Christ. And you can fix your own problems. God will help you fix your problems. We don't need, trust me, you don't need to go to counseling. You don't need to go to a therapist. You don't need to go in all these places. You need to go to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal exactly what is in your heart. And you need to have the courage to say, you know what? Yeah, that is me. That is me, Lord. I did that a long time ago. I said, God, I, don't, I, I tried really hard to be a good Christian, God. I tried to follow you, really. This, this stuff is tough. And I, I'm not good enough. And I need you. When I said I need you, he said, okay, now since you, you are, you're depending on me, now you'll experience grace. And so he began to teach me about his grace and I understood that this is such an easy life. It's such an easy life. If you understand that the, that the value of Christ, Christ values the kingdom, one of the values of the kingdom is giving. And giving is naturally Supernatural. God loved the world, He gave. Christ loved you and I so much that He gave His life. So giving is very natural to Christ. How do I know people are not Christ-like? Is when they don't give. <laughs> when, they, when, when they know, hey, you know, uh, it's that time of the month now and I need to tithe and I need to give into the kingdom of God and I need to... How much does Christ in you really love the church? We came very quiet. How much does Christ in you love the church that you're in? Because that is determined by how much you are willing to give. 
Love's measure is seen in love's sacrifice. Is your giving sacrificial? Or is your giving comfortable? Right, moving on. (laughs) I'd love for you to go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14 says this. You, he's talking about you. You. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now verse 16. Let your light so shine. Not his light, he's saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Your Father in heaven. I sound very Texan. But he's saying, glorify your Father, your light. They may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You see what Jesus has done? He's come to the earth and he's given you a relationship with the Father. And he's saying, listen, this is not just my father now. It's your father as well. It's not just my light. It's your light. It's not just my good works. It's your good works. You understand? So the vessel deserves honor. And so this is Christ's way of honoring you and me when we choose to say it's not about us, but it's, a, it's about you, Jesus. When in the kingdom, the value is about, hey, it's not about me. It's about you. I want to invest in you. I want to invest in the church. I want to invest in my time, my, my gifts, my materialistic things i want to invest it into you because i truly believe christ in you and so here what jesus is saying he's saying you are the light of the world when we receive the word of god into us we know that jesus is the light when we receive the word the light begins to to come and dwell on the inside of us so the deeper the light goes the brighter it shines the deeper the light goes on the inside of you, when, the, when it begins to shine through you, Jesus says that you are now a city that is set upon a hill. A city is a, a, when, is a group of people in the kingdom. The city is the kingdom. Christians who apply the, the value systems of heaven on earth become a city that is set on a hill. Jesus is not ashamed of those who apply the kingdom values. In fact, Jesus says, listen, I'm extremely proud of you. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to put you high up. Do you get it? Keys to promotion. You want to get promoted? Apply the values of the kingdom wherever you are. And so Jesus takes you and he promotes you and he puts you up on a hill and he says, man, I'm so proud of you. You, the world needs to see you. Why? It's because you are manifesting Jesus. You're revealing Jesus. And he says, you are now a city that is set upon a hill. A city that is set upon a hill is something that attracts people to it. It's not about light just shining and being being a light in the darkness. No, a light in the darkness attracts people to it. A moth to a flame. I'll, I'll give you another analogy which is really funny, but a bee to honey. Right? It's, it, there's something about you and me that attracts the world to us when we apply the value system of heaven on earth. And Jesus is saying, you're a city that is set on that hill. Wow, that is so powerful. Just imagine, uh, I'm just getting a picture right now, that, that your cells, with, uh, your, your cellular structure of, of, your, of your skin and, uh, and of, your, of the cells in your blood look like little, little vessels like that. And each vessel, instead of carrying human energy, carries the light of God. And these cells come together, these organs come together, or the entire body that comes to, that is together, that is filled with the word of God, that is filled with the presence of God, begins to shine. It begins to reveal the light of heaven on earth. And everybody on the earth, in the world, that is in darkness, is attracted to the light. See, a lot of times we think that we are the light and we need to go to the darkness. But in this case, you must understand, Jesus is not taking you and putting you in the darkness. He's taking you and putting you on top so that everybody sees who you are and is attracted to you. This is powerful. It's powerful. And so you must understand, he's saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. 
It's when you and I begin to apply the word of God in our life, we begin to manifest heaven on the earth. We begin to manifest this superimposing, this, this dominant kingdom that transforms things which are meant to die and gives it life. So when the world comes to you and they look at whoa, this light, whoa, whoa, how, how, how come you have this light? How come you are having this grace? How come, what is, how, how come you are, who, is, who gave you this permission? Who told you to be like this? Who, how come you are like this? When they come to you asking the questions, they are also looking at you. They're looking to see how you are working. They're looking to see what you are applying in your life. Because they desire what you have. Yeah. And when you, began, you begin to show your good works, they don't see you, ladies and gentlemen. They see your father. You must understand, every person that serves in the church, when you serve in our church, you are revealing your mother and father of the church. When Kelsey and I begin to, begin to serve uh, people, they begin to see our, our parents through us. They begin to see our spiritual parents through us. They don't see your mentor. They see your father. Yeah, very good. saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. God's desire is that everyone that comes to you sees him in you. But they won't see God the Father in you if Christ is not formed in you. So that's why it goes back to our value system. Christ in me. I want to live, I want to do everything to have Christ in me. What do I do to get more, more of Christ in me? Yeah, die to yourself and allow Christ to live in you. You want more of Christ? Right here. There's enough of Christ. This, this is Christ. On page, on pages. It's Christ on, in ink upon white pages. You can have enough of Christ all day long, every day, every minute of the day if you want. You can have Christ in you. But you won't bear harvest if you don't deal with your heart. If you don't position your heart for an increase of Christ in you. We must understand that Christ is the light. Christ is is the salt. Christ is the fruit. Christ is the gifts. Christ is the anointing. Christ has given you his spirit. Christ has given you life. Christ has given you a body. Christ has given you a wife. Christ has given you uh, a family. Christ has given you a church. Christ has given you uh, gifts, materialistic gifts. Christ has given, you, given us this camera. Christ has given us this lights, this house. Everything that we have in our life, including our eyes, our ears, nose to breathe, lungs, everything that is functioning. Everything belongs to God. It is given to us for the sole purpose of manifesting Christ on earth. Everything that has been given to us has been given to us by God so that we can steward it for the betterment of people around us and to glorify your Father in heaven. What are you using your gifts for? What are you using your finances for? Oh, I want to invest, I want to buy a house, I want to, I want to make money, I want to, yeah, sure, but, but what is it for? Really, 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 really. You want to have 10 houses, you can't live in one room. I mean, you can, you can live in one room. What are you going to do with those 10 houses? Oh, I want, I want to have an investment portfolio. Why? Why do you want to have an investment portfolio? Oh, because I want to show the kingdom, you know, the, I want to show that Christians are wealthy. Why? Why do you want to do that? If you keep going down that route and keep asking yourself why, 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 if Christ is not at the root, then you need to walk away from it. Because everything that God has given you is for the, for the kingdom expansion. We exist today, ladies and gentlemen, with all the resources that we have for the kingdom. Every single dollar in your account, you know how the bank has marked it? You must understand, God, his kingdom has marked it. He gave you that salary increase. He was the one who gave you that job. 
And if you think I earned it, then you will experience change and not transformation. And the time will come when Jesus will come to the tree and will want to look at the fruit on the tree. Say, where's the fruit? Hmm. Not seeing fruit on this tree. We've missed an opportunity to serve the kingdom of God. A graceful God that no matter what happens in your life, ladies and gentlemen, the words that are spoken of your life will always remain over your life. The anointing that is upon your life will always remain upon your life. But your character, if you don't deal with your heart, if you don't allow God to clean your heart and, and, and identify your heart, your character, the Christ character is not formed in you. And it is Christ's character that enables you and gives you the grace to, to use the gifts of God, to use the resources of the kingdom for his glory alone. And we must understand, all your qualification, your MBAs, your grad, you know, all that stuff, your doctorates, all of that. If you want to look at your heart, it needs to be about the kingdom. Every business that you have needs to be about the kingdom. If it's not for kingdom expansion, then it is for selfish gain. Somewhere in the title of the message, it was about the heart. <laughs> So I want us to, uh, I want us to, um, you know, I'm reminded of this story in the book of Genesis about this guy by the name of Joseph. And uh, I, I really love his story, you know, um, because Joseph was a guy who was favored by his father and he was also favored by God. And when he was about 17 years old, Joseph is busy stewarding his father's sheep. You must understand, he's positioned his heart to serve his father. And while he's serving his father, looking after the sheep, he gets dreams. And when he gets these dreams, he, these dreams are about him being exalted. You know, have you ever had a dream where God has said, hey, this is the call of your life and I've called you to be a leader and you've gone to the wrong people and shared that dream? <laughs> and that's what happens to Joseph. He went to the wrong community. <laughs> he went to a community that, was, uh, uh, that, that really did not like him. But Joseph at 17 years old has received a dream and he positions his heart for increase. He says, okay, my surroundings don't determine what God has positioned for me. When they sold him as a slave, he went into slavery, but he did not reject the place that he was in. He looked at the place as a stepping stone to where God was taking him. See, he goes there and he's sold into Potiphar's house as a slave. And Potiphar now, he begins to serve Potiphar in such a way, listen to this, that God blesses him in everything that he does. I want you to go to uh, Genesis chapter 39 and we'll pick up the story there. And verse 1 says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Now, Listen to this. The Lord was with Joseph. Who was with Joseph? Lord. Where did the Lord come from? In the dream. Yeah. It was the word in the dream that Joseph positioned his heart for increase. So the increase that Joseph experienced was not because he was a good guy. It was because the Lord, the harvest had manifested in his life. So the harvest, the Lord, the word of God was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Success to us in the kingdom is not determined by what is happening around us. Success in the kingdom is determined by how much of Christ is in us. It's a good word. And his master, look, look at this now. Jesus says, the world will see 
your father. They will see your good works. They will see your father. Okay. So now listen to this. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. The master was experiencing the harvest, the increase of the harvest in his life. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. This is phenomenal. When you receive the word of God, you might be going to the office and you might just be doing your normal work. But the Lord, because you have decided to apply the value system of the kingdom in your life, now the Lord begins to take what you're doing and add grace to it, add his anointing to it. And he blesses only what you're doing. Come on, man. That's just, that is phenomenal. That's absolutely phenomenal. He's not blessing your colleagues but he's blessing you. He's making you stand out. He's making you be that city upon a hill. I hope you're getting, I hope you're understanding what's happening here. So Joseph, verse four, found favor in his sight and served him. He didn't say, wow, you know, God, uh, wow, this is, uh, God is blessing the, my hands. I need to get into a business. And so we think, we think we, we experience a little bit of blessing in our life and we think, wow, God is coming to be in business. No. He continued to be a slave. Then he made him, this is Potiphar, made Joseph an overseer of his house. He promoted him in his slavery. But you must understand that word overseer means steward. He made him a steward of his house and all that he had put All he had, he put under his authority. So it was from that time that he had made him an overseer of his house and all that he had. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. You must understand, when your company promotes you to a certain position, God blesses the company because they honored you. Hold on a minute, they didn't actually honor you. They honored Christ in you. They don't know it, but somehow you deserve a promotion, brother. You deserve a promotion, my sister. You deserve a promotion. Okay, promote me then. There, you do that. Go ahead and promote me. When they promote you, the company is all of a sudden is being blessed. Wow, you need a double promotion now. Amen. Because they figured out there's something about you that's different. What is that difference? Christ in me, the hope of glory. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Which means Joseph didn't complain going in the hot sun, even though he was in authority in the house. A lot of people have an issue in church. They don't like to be under authority. They think that just because they've been in church for a long time, that they need to be in, have a voice of influence in the church. No. The way God works in his kingdom is a little different. He promotes you in the kingdom, but you are still under authority. And when you learn to serve in that place, he blesses the work of your hands. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread he ate. Can you imagine how much this man trusted Jesus Christ, God in Joseph. He gave him his entire household, all his servants, everything. He only knew the bread that was on his plate. Even the bread that was on his plate was given to him by Joseph. That's how much the world desires Jesus. That's how much they want Jesus. They want Christ from our lives. It's amazing how how God would allow a man... A young man, 13 years in slavery. 13 years. Some of us have been through a tough time lately because of the COVID situation. It's been only four months. 13 years in slavery. 13 years coming in and out of prisons, wrongfully accused. One of the things that God really dealt with in my life is when people wrongfully accuse me that I have to give an explanation to prove that I'm right, that I'm innocent. God clearly told me when they wrongfully accuse you, they wrongfully accuse me. If Christ is in you 
and people wrongfully accuse you, they are rejecting God. You stay your lane. That's what God told me. Stay on your path. I've called you to walk a road. You walk that road. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what people do. Their opinion does, does not change my opinion of you. He said, you be faithful to me because I've been faithful to you. See, a lot of times our faithfulness to God is conditional based on his faithfulness to us. Only when I see God's faithfulness, then I will be faithful to him. Not realizing the fact that you're living, breathing, having everything in your life. You're in comfort. You're sitting in AC today. You have a car. You have a family. You have everything around you. But you fail to see that as God's faithfulness to you. See, our faithfulness to God is just a little bit of our worship to him. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, Jesus is explaining the parable and he says this. He says, a, a person who is good ground is a person who receives the word, who hears the word and understands the word. That these three things define good ground. Hearing is listening. A lot of people listen, but they don't receive. And Jesus is saying the qualifications of good ground is receiving, listening, and understanding. Understanding has to do with perception. It has to do with you perceiving. It has to do with you experiencing with the five senses that God has given you. So what, it, what Jesus is trying to say here is that when you receive the word, you've got to understand, which means I've got to, while I'm receiving the word, I've got to have application in mind. That is what understanding in the kingdom of God means. It means that when I'm listening to the word, I'm listening, I'm receiving it because I'm receiving. I have a heart that loves Christ. I have a heart that values Christ. I want Christ. That's why I'm receiving this word. I'm not just receiving another message. I'm receiving Christ. When I receive Christ, now I'm listening to what the word is saying about the state of my heart. And, I'm, and when he reveals the state of my heart, I'm not fighting against him saying, no, no, that's not me. I'm better than that. I'm taking responsibility for my actions. I'm taking responsibility for the state of my heart. See, people can hurt you, but the choice to be hurt is yours. You can choose to be offended. People can try to offend you. People don't offend you. You can get offended on your own. You can get offended sitting on your house, whether people do anything or not. Some people get offended because they don't get a message. Some people get offended because they get a message. Some people get uh, offended because nobody calls me. Some people get offended when they call me. <laughs> Do you understand? You, but offense is something that is your choice. Yes. Hurt is your choice. Nobody can hurt you if you don't want them to hurt you. You can choose to live in fear. Nobody can intimidate you. They can try, but you have to make the choice to say, I'm afraid of you, which means you have more power over me in this situation. See, but, but God is saying to us, he's like, hey, when you listen to my word, are you processing the state of your heart with the word that you're hearing? Because when you do that, it will reveal areas of your heart that is either stony ground, that is a wayside, that has thorns and thistles, or is good ground. I'm believing that Life Church Global is good ground. Amen. When you figure out what is the state of your heart and you deal with it, that's when you make a choice to apply it in your life. I've seen an area of my heart today. Man, when Pastor John was talking about that part, ooh, it hurt a little bit. Uh, and I know that I need to work on that part. So I'm going to make a mental note of applying that word every day. So when, I, when the message is over, I'm not going to just forget like, wow, we had a good service. Praise the Lord, Pastor John. I'm going to go to God and I'm going to say, God, 
there's this part of my heart that when he was preaching the word, when you were talking to me today to, through Pastor John, I felt like you were, you were telling me something. And so I, I, I give this, I surrender this area of my heart to you, God. And I ask you to, to remove the things that are in my heart so that I can receive the word of God can go deep into my heart. And I truly believe that if we can create this culture in our church, we can create this culture in our, uh, in our communication with one another, when we are around one another, I truly believe that the, the, the lifestyle of the world would become less and the lifestyle of the kingdom would increase in our life. We would see the kingdom of God manifesting in our life more than the kingdom of this world. And I truly believe that for you and I today. And I want to bless you. I want to declare that this word is good seed and it has gone deep into your hearts. I want to pray for you right now. Each and every person that is watching me and listening to me. I want to pray for you that your heart would be opened. Father, I pray for every single person that is watching me right now. I thank you that they have stayed back because they value your word. They value the community, the spiritual community that you have planted us in. Lord, we value it. And we thank you, Father, for the word that you have given us so freely today. Lord, what a heart check. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a heart check. You've, you've checked our heart, a checkmate today, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we stand with our hands surrendered completely to you. Not that you have a gun pointed at us, but, but your word has convicted us in our hearts. And Father, we just, we love Jesus. We desire to be like Jesus. Lord, every single day, God, we desire to be like Jesus. And we know that you have given us the Christ seed so that Christ can be formed in us so that we could be more Christ-like than we were yesterday, God. That we would not be satisfied with where we're at until the fullness of Christ's glory is manifested in our lives. And Father, I pray for every single person watching that their hearts will be open, the seed will go deep into their heart and they will bear a harvest of Christ in their life and the glory of God will begin to shine all over over the world because Life Church Global has a high value for Christ in me, the hope of glory. I thank you, Father, for giving us your word. I thank you for trusting us with your kingdom. So let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives and in our cities and our nations. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We bless you, we love you, and we will see you next week. God bless.